I'm Joss. Hi, I'm Claudia. And this is the Let's Get Down to Business podcast. We're two cousins on opposite ends of the globe with a lot of opinions about figure skating. And we're here to deliver the news, recaps, and to kick off season two of the pod, unfortunately continue to scratch our head at ladies PCS scoring. Hi everyone, welcome to season two of the pod. Season two, we we actually made it to recording. We have been so incredibly busy. We haven't had any chance to really record. I mean, we had an off-season episode ready. We took notes on Cranberry Cup, the Cranberry Blueberry Strawberry thing that happened earlier <laughs> this season. Um, but think- then we had executive functioning dysfunction and didn't actually make it to the microphone. <laughs> And like daylight saving wasn't in place to save any of us. And so, yeah, we're starting episode one of season two with Skate America, which feels like the middle of the season. <laughs> we made it. We made it. That's what, that's all I have to say for myself. Yeah, same here. The bar is low, my friends. Will it ever get raised? The answer is no. no. <laughs> I refuse. <laughs> I refuse. I won't do it. Um, Unfortunately, I was actually supposed to potentially go to Skate America this year, or at least I wanted to. Like we know, the one live event that I continually harp on uh, was Skate America two years ago. And unfortunately, um, I'm currently in a job transition. But had I quit my job a couple of weeks earlier, I would have been able to go. But alas, here we are at home enjoying ourselves on the couch. I mean, it was great to see a little bit of an audience at Skate America, you still had the um, the cardboard cutouts, which I thought were a cute addition. Although, like, cardboard cutouts next to real people, every time skaters would go around that corner and I would see the cardboard cutouts, I'd be like, hmm, they're stiff face. And I'm like, oh, they're not actually real people. But okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I struggle with uh, facial expressions, so they're, they're kind of a nice relief sometimes. <laughs> All right. Um, Without further ado, I guess, let's just get stuck straight into it because we've got like a bunch of things to go through. I'm sure we'll get way more verbose. We'll probably do another episode with all of the, you know, off-season news and shenanigans that we haven't yet got to. Yeah, this episode, we're going to be doing pairs and ladies. The next episode, we're going to be doing dance and men. Uh, let's just start with pairs. So we are going to talk about, oh my gosh, our Canadian friends, <laughs> Evelyn Walsh and Trent Michaud. Not our personal friends. I mean, if you don't want to be friends, that'd be fine with me. But <laughs> just to clarify. <laughs> I mean, they, they have pretty good song selections. We've got Freya Riding's Lost Without You for their short program. That's a plus. Yeah, we also have Dreaming with a Broken Heart by John Mayer for their free skate. However, it was kind of some Taylor Swift whiplash because Chelsea and Danny skated to Lover. And I was like, you know, Taylor Swift and John Mayer are attending the same skating competition. (laughs) I'm not entirely sure how to feel about this. Socially distanced, probably, for their own good. I hope there was a lot of social distance between them. (laughs) Anyways, uh, Evelyn and Trent, uh, unfortunately, they did not have a good time here. And I'm not sure if it's just because of the John Mayer and Taylor Swift was there as well. But it was it was not a good outing for them. They really did look disappointed. So in the short program, Evelyn under rotated the side by side triple toes. She took a really hard fall on the throw triple loop. And there was a mistake on the triple twist as well. And then in the free skate, continued to have a hard time with the side-by-side triple toes and the throw triple loop and with honestly a lot of the elements as well so yeah I mean we'll get to like men in the next episode but sometimes the ice would just be delivering a splat fest and there were hard falls I think there's like a YouTube video up about hard falls at Skate America and like if you if you've got enough content to create a whole YouTube video about this like (laughs) The ice is cursed. The ice is cursed. Um, but yeah, they they really need to up their game. I hate to say, I mean, it is still early in the season. First Grand Prix, you know, we're only in late October. <laughs> we're only in late October with the Olympics in like a few months, but they still have time to like really clean things up and try and go for that Olympic spot. But here's to hoping... Um, Their second Grand Prix event is NHK Trophy. Um, So 
that that will be really fun. NHK is always a fun one, and they've got ample time before that. So good luck to them. Also, I don't think we mentioned this, but I'll like dip my toe in. But both Evelyn and Trent worked on the really quality show that Netflix put out called Spinning Out. Read between the lines, ladies and gentlemen. The quality. You know what? I love that quality. (laughs) They served as skating doubles, so that's always fun, right? Anyways, let's not talk about that anymore. I, uh, I I think that they are in a really tough position because yeah. of the Olympic spots and now the emergence of James and Radford in Canada. I, I just think they're kind of in a rough spot. Not having a good skate here did not really set them up for success. Yeah. But again, they do have time to clean things up before NHK. Um, and really, I think they are much better than this. It just seemed to be a rough event for them. I do know that they have performed way better than this. And that fight for the spot will be very interesting now with the, again, emergence of James and Radford but just fingers crossed for them because I hate seeing them disappointed and they seemed really sad and I I don't like that a lot of team Canada like has had a lot of struggles in the past like season and a bit so like we need to prop them up guys we need to prop them up um and how about let's move on to our seventh place finishes and this is the new pairing of Chelsea Liu and Danny O'Shea who are like skating to Lover by Taylor Swift for their short program. I'm like, this is like a great choice. This is a great choice. And I love this new pairing for for many reasons, for many reasons, but they look like they're actually having great fun out there. Yeah, you know, I've always wanted to see a Taylor Swift program. So just the Swifty and me is very happy. Lover is not my favorite song, but you know, we can't can't ask for too much. (laughs) Um, I'll, I'll take what I can get. She uh, writes a list and DMs them going, here are all the Taylor Swift songs you need to skate to. And they're like, we're not a Taylor Swift team. <laughs> like, Jocelyn. You know, I'm not above that. I will tell you right now. <laughs> well, I'm that's not above true. It. That's true. <laughs> I, I do really enjoy their connection. They seem to be, you know, they seem to communicate with each other a lot on the ice, which mm-hmm. again, seems a little bit amateur, but also it's nice to see because they're a new pair, you know, they're still yeah. working on their communication. They're working on their connection. You know, there are things that they can definitely work on. For example, their spins are not totally in sync. Um, You can see them kind of laughing about certain things during their performance, during their programs. But overall, I I do really enjoy them and I'm looking forward to see where they go. Absolutely. And, you know, I think especially for a new pair and given, you know, the global climate. I I think I would personally rather see a quote unquote amateur pair in terms of like that you can see them laughing about themselves and the mistakes they've made or like chatting on the ice all the time. I'd rather see that than like a stone face program where it's like you can almost feel their stress and you're like you're stressed yourself watching them. Um, but sports all about you know having fun, whether it's at the really basic level or at the top level so I'm glad they're enjoying it because I can feel the joy watching them so yeah I mean side by side jumps definitely need work like a lot a lot of American pairs but you know what each to their own America (laughs) yeah side by side jumps we can just kind of do we even really need to say that anymore? It can just be like yeah, the exactly. disclaimer in the show notes that American pairs could work on their side-by-side jumps. Maybe but... USFS should have like a banner up instead of the Geico <laughs> Gecko. Just be like, we can't do side-by-side jumps. Please excuse us. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. In, in the free skate, he fell on the triple toe. She could not tack on another jump. Um, both the throw triple loop and the throw triple lutz did not work out. Uh, she double-footed the lutz landing. However, the other pairs elements were actually quite good and you can tell that their chemistry is pretty natural and it's still developing in terms of chatting on the ice you know kind of enjoying themselves but I actually really like them and I feel I feel hopeful about them I'm also hopeful because if you look at their score sheet for the free skate like you said apart from the elements that you know they fell on there's all like plus threes and plus twos on there. So, you know, the judges, they have quality elements and individually they're both great skaters as well. They've got heaps of experience. So, and that definitely shows. So there is promise, um, fingers crossed for them because I like watching them escape. All right, let's move on, shall we? Um, let's move on to our babies, um, Alina Pepleva and Roman Pleshkov from Russia. Are we allowed to say Russia? Like, do we have to say like... FSR or something or like 
whatever acronym the Russian Federation decides to throw out for their non-doping athletes. It changes everything. Maybe for the purposes of this podcast, we'll just call them from Russia, but with an asterisk. Asterisk. There we go. Russia. Asterisk. Um, What a fun word to say. Anyway. So Alina is 18, Roman is 21, so that's like just prime coming out of juniors. And I don't know, to me, they still skate like juniors, and that is completely fine because they are so young, um, and hopefully they'll last for seasons to come. But, you know, I think their base is very strong, they've got lovely costumes, um, and yeah, what did you think about them? Yeah, they weren't. I, I don't think that these two programs are necessarily the best vehicles to display their skill. Yeah. I, I just don't think that these two are kind of, I'm not sure. I, I just don't think that the programs are really great with each other in this season. And I also think that they're not my favorite individually for them. Um, the the elements were not fantastic, although there was a huge throw triple loop in the short program. Um, But overall, just not particularly exciting to me. And I do think that they can do more. Again, they have time. They are very young. Um, And I think that in the short program, the all gray head to toe costume for him was definitely a choice, um, considering (laughs) that the fabric that it was in was not the most flattering. I think that that could be changed a little bit. But yeah, not their best outing. And also, I don't think these programs are particularly exciting to me personally, nor do I think are they the best vehicles for them. I agree. I think this is a slight issue I have with a lot of the up and coming junior slash senior, like newly senior Russian pairs. There's a lot of them. And it, I don't want to say cookie cutter because a lot of the music choices for the pairs are different in a lot of ways, but it just feels very formulaic almost. And there's nothing really like X factory. Um, I hope that changes because they, we all know that Russia has a load of talent in, you know, every single discipline, but You know what? First, I think first Grand Prix for them. um, I don't think they really have a shot at making the Olympic team. So hopefully they just take this as a great learning experience. And, you know, in the next quad, oh my God, Olympics is so soon. In the next quad, we'll see them grow and develop. Yeah, I agree. I I don't think they quite have that X factor yet. However, something that they do have is that their coach has the same hair as Victor or Nikki Fora from Fury on Ice. And I very much appreciated seeing that in the Kiss and Cry. I was, as soon as that coach sat down, I was like, this is reminding me of something. Oh, I've seen you before. I've seen you before. And then Joss texted me going, this is such Victor hair. I'm like, that's what it is. That's, that's it. what it is. He has X Factor. Yes, he's good. <laughs> Let's move on to our fifth place finishers. Oh, gosh, this this team, they've been through it. Uh, yes. Jessica Callalang and Brian Johnson from the U.S. And again, we will talk about the things that they have been through in our offseason slash news slash strawberry blueberry cup episode mm-hmm. um, for their short program. Oh, my gosh, they were so happy with their short program. And I'm really glad that yes. they had this experience because, again, they've been through it. Um, they actually came in fourth place in the short program, even though they were fifth overall, and they skated to come together. I actually, you know what, we've heard a lot of come together in the like the past seasons, maybe ish. <laughs> yes, we have. Yes, we have. For some reason, it's becoming a war horse. Like maybe Gary Clark Jr. is going to have a great season. Who knows? <laughs> um, but I, you know what, I vibe with it. It's like a really vibey um, song anyway. Um, but I'm always happy to see them happy because they're not the most consistent um, <laughs> skaters by any means. But given what they've gone through, they've got a Grand Prix, they're skating. And, you know, that can do it for me. I think overall, it just looks like they're getting competition feet under them. Um, We know that they can do better. And for me, I prefer the short program over their free program um, this season. But I'm just happy to see them on the ice, really. I totally agree. I mean, in the short program, they landed their side-by-side jump. They actually looked very pleased about that. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Uh, She landed. I I don't know if the throw was a little bit off, but she did land a little bit pitched forward on the throw triple lutz, um, but was able to save the landing very well. Um, They did lose some levels on the step sequence, which, again, is fine because I think the program was just good in general however in the free skate their side-by-side jump issues came roaring back unfortunately 
Um, she fell on the side by side triple toes. It was also called on the quarter and could not tack on another jump for the combo. So definitely left a lot of points on the table there. Um, and then Brian fell on the side by side cells and she doubled. So Ugh. I mean, everything else was fine. <laughs> everything else was great. Everything else was great. Just again, the side by side issues and yeah. and it, they really didn't show up much in the short program. It was just in the mm. free skate. Which I mean, that's the that's the divider, right? <laughs> yes, we we do have to land our jumps, folks. But <laughs> yes, and there are two of them. You have to do two side by side jumps, like woo, two side by side jumps. Oh, big, no. big, 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 big. Um, but ultimately, those mistakes were what cost them the the placing over Kinnearum and Fraser. But speaking about Jess's throws, like she can be pitched at like ninety deg- like parallel to the ice, and she finds a way to land them, like. I don't know. She's she's nuts in terms of the throws. You think she's going to fall right on her hip and then she's like, nah, I'm good. I'll, I'll stand on one leg. Thank you. Um, <laughs> crazy. Speaking of which, let's move on to our fourth place finishers, Alexa Kinnearum and Brendan Fraser, also from the U.S. Oh, my gosh. These two. OK, first of all, I do have to say that I really enjoy Alexa's costumes. Alexa always has fantastic costumes, yes. but like. This short program costume was like very, very spot on. I enjoyed it. I agree. It so I much. completely agree. I fix use costume not so much to my taste, but House of the Rising Sun short program great, and Alexa definitely found a way to land those throws. Yeah, it really does seem like Brendan and Brian went in on like a bogo for their <laughs> costumes because <laughs> yes, they did. Brian had like a one shoulder purple applique on a black shirt. And then Brendan had a very similar one sided blue slash gray applique on his black shirt. It really does look like they did a BOGO. So I think we need to spice up the men's costumes a little bit. Here. Maybe they'll do like a switcheroo being like, you know, you need some. It's how it, not house. It's um, brothers of the traveling shirts. <laughs> Brothers of the traveling shirt. I wonder if they just kind of like Velcro the appliques on so they can like save a little. Ooh. I mean, it, it could very well. Someone should start that business. Someone should. And you know what? Like if they're feeling like particularly X Factory, you know, they can do an Anna Sherbakova costume change. You know, they'd be just like, hmm, I'm going to rip that Velcro off. And OK, you know what? I don't know what I was going <laughs> relay relay velcro costume Re- relay velcro costume, and like chuck it to the other side of the ring just throw and, like, it to the next yeah. man that's in line <laughs> <laughs> anyways yeah. we're gonna stop patenting costumes yes figure skating i mean i feel like that's half of our podcast anyway we're just like throwing out so many patent ideas yeah we're on hashtag entrepreneur hashtag girl boss there we go there we go Anyways, before we delve too deep into our pyramid schemes here, let's talk about House of the Rising Sun, which was Alexa and Brendan's short program. They're improving every single season. Their their side by side jumps. Uh, the Holy Ghost is getting skinnier and skinnier. Um, in between them, yeah, I think they're getting stronger, and definitely in time for this Olympic season. Their throw jumps are just huge. Like Alexa, she travels so much. I I think that um, he did make a mistake on the triple toe loop, which was, you know, (laughs) it happens. Uh, But then in the free skate, they really redeemed themselves. They actually ended up coming in second in the free skate. Uh, They scored 136.60. However, I am not a fan of how... At the beginning, it's a fix you cover, and yeah. then at the end, we just Chris Martin just suddenly appears as if we we hired him, but he was late, so he just it's like they couldn't kind of afford like the full royalties <laughs> or like the full Chris Martin time. <laughs> Could only fall like thirty seconds. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not really sure what what happened there, but I'm not not a fan of the cover and then the actual Coldplay fix you. I think I think that needs to be changed. <laughs> Americans weird. and their um not just Americans like skating in general and their uh, music cuts and choices we can improve ladies and gents we can improve but also like Brandon needs to improve Alexa did was it just me or did she do a triple toe triple toe and he's just like I'm good I'll do a triple toe double toe I feel like I think she like looked at him with her signature what did you do yeah Alexa <laughs> I think Alexa Kinnearum and Ksenia Stolbova would be great friends i feel like they would you know do death stare um training between the two she definitely like gave him the side oh yeah (laughs) for sure um but they 
they have great redeeming free skates. I feel like, I, I think I said this to you, if um, let's just say Alexa and Brandon, as well as Jessica and Brian, um, go to the Olympics and Team USA in the team event needs to pick, you know, two pairs to do short and free, don't put Jessica and Brian in for the free skate, put them in for the short and Alexa and Br Brandon can do the free skate and bing, bang, bong, you've got a gold. <laughs> like those two are this, like, that's their strong programs, I feel. I agree. I agree. Um, Alexa and Brandon were so happy. They seemed very ecstatic. There were no big mistakes in the free skate, just kind of like little bobbles here and there occasionally. And I do believe that they have ample time to clean that up this season. So yeah, I'm really pleased about that. And also maybe hire Chris Martin for the whole thing. Yeah, maybe. Those are my critiques. Maybe. <laughs> um, Team USA funding come through. <laughs> Okay, let's move on to our third place finishes, Alexandra Boykova and Dmitry Kozlovsky. Who knew them in third? But here we are. <laughs> here yeah. we are. Here, here, here we are. So they actually came second in the short and fourth in the free skate. They didn't have a great free skate. But their short program, look, I, I have thunks, thoughts about it. I don't know why I say thunks, but I have thunks about it. We, we've got it to Swan Lake. Dimitri has like a huge uh, Rothbart like wings on his back. And if you didn't know he was skating to Swan Lake, you'd be like, is this like an Ed Hardy shirt? That's like really. Ed Hardy really has a stronghold on Russian men's costumes. Uh, that is incredibly really true. Incredibly true. Maybe he has a BOGO as well. Yeah, maybe. Who, who knows? Sponsorships. Um, not actually, but... So in my notes, I, I have, they're great skaters, undeniably. They've got great quality, but I was really disappointed when they announced their programs. Like Swan Lake and Malaguena, we're not Sasha Cohen in the mid 2000s, guys. We can, we can move past this. That was literally like 20 years ago. I just, I think it's very generic. I, I don't think there's yeah. anything special about this one, like, or Malaguena. Like, at least Alina Zagitova had, you know, like, her little costume thingy change. She was so into she it. She was so okay. into Alina it. Alina was very, very into that program. I know. And look, it paid off for her. I enjoyed it as well. And if you're going to do Swan Lake, like, Jimmy Mara, like, be into it. Like, actually play the role. Okay, roles. but also, like, when we talk about men, Jimmy Ma did not really get into his black swan, and it really disturbed me. Um, anyways, what do you mean? His, arms, his arm flapping was on point. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I did also take that note yes. that his arm flapping was on point. Anyways, um, I, I really think that, especially in the free skate here, it seemed particularly labored yeah the opening jumping pass and the fall on the throw triple flip seemed extremely labored they did not seem in tune with one another at all they could use some of that on ice communication that Chelsea and Danny had yeah. because I just felt like something was really off here and they seemed very frustrated not very inspired that, I don't that's know what it. was, what was I don't think them. any of these the short or the free skate are in are inspired um no it feels like I, so. I remember reading listening to something where Tessa and Scott Tessa Virtue and Scott Moyer they were like one season we just could not figure out what music we wanted to skate to and so Marina's wave is just like all right here you go you're skating to Malaguena and they hated it for the entire season oh no because because they would just couldn't decide and Marina was just like all right this is this is too much like this is what you're skating to like a piece of generic music which Mal that's not a that's not a slight on Malaguena great piece of music but it's just we've heard it so 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 much like big warhorse mood um so that's all I can think of when e whenever anyone skates to Malaguena and I don't know it just doesn't feel inspired they can do better I would actually prefer them to keep both of their programs from last season um just because this I don't know. It's not a good vehicle for them, I don't think. It just feels like they're swapping out music and costumes. Um, and I feel like they're also, they get in their head quite a lot. Yeah, they really do get in their head a lot, especially, gosh, the the side-by-side -side triple cells in the short program, completely out of sync. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, also lost levels on the death spiral, which definitely cost them points. The fall in the free skate just doesn't seem quite packaged very well this season and I'm not sure why because they have always seemed to be packaged very intentionally but I'm not sure what it is about these programs but I yeah. I just don't 
I'm not not a fan this season of these programs Neither. for them. I mean, they are with the legendary Tamara Moscovino. She's always been great at packaging. So I would hesitate a thought that it's really them and their mental state because there is no doubt that they are talented. They are great skaters. They've got such great quality, but they just can't get it together in terms of like competition and I, that's I think the mental game for them is more of an issue than anything technical because I they've got the talent for it they've got the skill um but yeah we'll see how the season progresses but so far judging by like what we saw last season as well it it doesn't seem like the trajectory is going the consistent way <laughs> I don't think so how however I hate it when people do bad. Yes. However, I do love it when my faves yes. do well. And that is our second place finishers, <laughs> Riku Miura and Ryuichi Kihara from Japan. Oh, oh my goodness. The most lovely, joyful people oh you will ever God. see. And such a nice change from Sasha and Dimitri who were very upset. But oh my gosh, these, oh my again, lovely, joyful people. I'm so excited for them. They, the improvement is genuinely so visible, obviously. Every time, every, every single time. They every skate. single time. They are so supportive of one another. They, oh, I am over the moon for them. I think this is their silver medal that they got is the first Grand Prix pairs medal for Japan since like 2011 when Narumi Takahashi and um, Mervyn Tran won a medal. That is, that is 10 years, 10 years. And look at them now standing on the bloody podium after two like pretty <laughs> good skates, pretty good skates. I adore them. I adore them too. Oh my gosh. There was really only one big mistake in the yeah. free skate. In the short program, honestly, these two are one of the only teams at this point that I will tolerate hallelujah from. Exactly. Like, there's just been so much hallelujahing over the yes. years, but I will tolerate and accept it and celebrate it with these two because I adore them. Completely agree. Um, the the side by side triple toes were called on the quarter, and the only again the big mistake that they made was in the free skate. Um, she fell on the throw triple lutz, but it was a huge fall. She like crashed into slammed the into the boards. Yeah. yeah, not not good here. But unfortunately, it I mean fortunately, it did not seem to phase them, and they just kind of carried on, which is what I love about them. Exactly. They just have like this very bright spirit and it was so nice to see that even with such a big fall um crashing into the boards they just kind of went about on their merry way and did the rest of their program very well their skating skills markedly improved their synchronization it's just it's a great package really like oh i'm such a fan um you know i think ryuichi needs to teach me like quad endurance, like muscle endurance, because every single time he goes into that lift, <laughs> like short program and free program, he's just like, mm, I'm going to show everybody how weak your quads are in terms of endurance. And he's doing he's doing the whole, um, you know, lifting from kneeling position and then getting out of the lift by kneeling as well at the end of his free program. Like uh, my quads hurt from watching him. And you can tell. I don't, I don't need Ryuichi to show me about my quad weakness. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm well aware. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks. For and like, I feel so bad for him because every single time, um, I like after that lift, they finish the program and he is like gas and like fair enough because <laughs> like done. I'm watching them and I'm gassed for him. Um, but like all power, man, like they should be getting way more GOE. Honestly, they're only getting like plus threes and a few plus fours and like come on judges like raise the bar i know if if you're gonna like Truly. if you're gonna m make your judging questionable please do it in the right way <laughs> truly truly no judge everyone fairly that's true. anyways that's true. We'd, we'd actually really like to see it like no joke we we would love to see that actually that would be fantastic however um, let's move on to our gold medalists, Evgenia Tarasova and Vladimir Morozov from Russia. They kept it together for two programs, Joss. Finally. Thank goodness. Finally. Thanks, Love it. Good on them. So they, again, we'll cover this in more detail in our mishmash episode, but they have added the two breeds, a team to their coaching team. 
I said team quite a lot there. As has everyone this season. I mean, but look, it has worked out for them. I think they said the team has added a lot to jumps in terms of like side by side jumps and cleaning up a lot of things such as, you know, performance and little details to choreography. And and I think it's paid off. I think both their programs this year are truly beautiful. I think it they're great vehicles. They skate them really, really well when they're on. And, you know, they're a pair that everyone knows has incredible quality. It's like when Mikhail Kolyada steps on the ice and you're just like, wow, what have I been watching before? This is like next level stuff. Um, and to see them actually perform like decently well is, is real. It's really nice because it's all like just said, we love to see when people do well and given their quality and what we know that they can do except for candy man that was a very like that was a choice man like these are better choices for an olympic season um not better costumes though imagine if they just like skated these for the remainder of the season and they were like psych candy man for the olympics i would fly to beijing risk like risk a lot of things and be like no i'm stealing your music back and you're not getting to candy man <laughs> Um, they really won out in GOEs here. They got more plus fives across the board compared to our second and third place finishers. However, their short program costumes oh are for sure not in the same color family. And They're that not. always bugs me. Like, if we have a separate, like, PCS for costumes, that shouldn't be in the nines, man. That should be, like, very much at least in the fives. They're not... Maybe, like, a solid seven. That's generous. Like, they're not in the... I thought pairs, like, they're supposed to be matching or at least, like, pull a Brandon and Brian and just do a black with, like, a... A Brandon and Brian. Like, a, a B&B. And Beltra. just, like, black with a stripe, not, like, maroon and... They're not in the same colour wheel family. It's just... It's very jarring. It is. Maybe just, like, put someone in, like, a full grey costume and we'll call it a day. Oh, no, not the full gray. The full gray was was too much for me. Anyways, in, in the free skate, it was not perfect in the free skate. However, it was more than enough to um, come in first. Uh, and the three jump combo, uh, Vladimir had a wobble. Couldn't tack on the last double toe. Uh, the lifts were definitely great, yes. although not as effortless as I've seen them before. Um, however... Oh, she also doubled the opening cell, yeah. so definitely some jump errors here. However, even with the mistakes on jumps, I think the difference in free skate scores uh, in the few teams below them, with Alexa and Brandon coming in second, um, and then Boykova and Kozlovsky coming in fourth, this definitely had them winning because overall, consistently, they were definitely the best team here. Yeah, and they definitely won over in terms of PCS by big margin, which is, in my opinion, deserved given their quality. But yeah, it's so interesting to hear you say that um, the lifts weren't as strong as you know you've seen them in the past which you know i'll agree with but you know for them vladimir gets you know genya up so quickly he's always um his frame belies his strength in my opinion like he is an incredibly strong partner um but look beginning of the season we'll give it you know we'll give it time it's fine it's fine, it's fine. lifts are exactly. effortful i understand i know they have a gold medal now. i can't lift um, shit so <laughs> Fine. me and my upper body okay. strength non-existent all right like i'll i'll do one pull up and i'll call it like a year um they'll be okay <laughs> one pull up and sit on the couch for half an hour eating, they'll be okay. eating chips thanks mackenzie um mackenzie exactly all right that's the <laughs> pairs event um i'm grand prix season has me excited i love grand prix season because especially in non-covid where we've got different you know skaters from different Actual countries, countries Act competing exactly. against one another it's very refreshing also because there's you know less skaters it's really compact but also exciting um less skaters i mean in terms of like when we're reviewing stuff um we don't have like pages and pages of documents and it's easier to i guess keep everything tidy um but nice compact it's not thing. for me i never keep anything tidy you're assuming that i keep things tidy my attention span can only like last two groups but that's not a knock on anyone. That's just me and my brain. Anyway, <laughs> that's just our neurodivergence. Please excuse us. Please excuse us. 
<laughs> All right, let's let's move on to ladies. Oh my god, ladies! How exciting! Oh, ladies! I I really enjoy this ladies event, Me too. and maybe it's just in contrast to the men's event. But but truly, I I enjoy this event quite a bit. Men, um, men's event was like very chaotic, like you know the men are. This as, was as like less are. chaotic. This was more, yeah, just less chaotic. The usual. It was more the mm-hmm. usual. All right, so we had. We had in 12th place Audrey Shin from the U.S. Um, It was not her event, unfortunately, this time. And I think she started to register that a little bit of the way in the free skate. That was a rough free skate. That was rough. It was definitely a rough free skate. Um, In the short program, her triple loop was called under. The combo was tight on the landing. However, in an interview that she did afterwards, she said that she has worked very hard to correct her under rotations because that has consistently been an issue for her. And it seems like she's aware of that. Um, She said, in competition, I get tight and have a bad habit of an open air position. So it sounds like she knows what to correct. It's just about kind of putting that into practice and drilling it over and over again. Um, But I do think that just with these programs, I understand if this is her jam with the music, but I think that it's time for her to try something new and fun. I could not agree more. (laughs) I'm really not a fan. Like, okay. Moonlight Sonata, fine. I'm really not a fan of the short program music. Not to say it's not beautiful music, but it's so... It is. It's very It beautiful. is such figure skating music. And it's like one of those things when, like, you grow up hearing, you know, the ice dance tracks in the rink and you're just like, I can't stand any more of this. This is such f- skating music. And I'm like, I please have something else. That's my personal opinion. Yeah, just... Just maybe for one season. Maybe. Just try something new. I, I also think that the two programs are quite similar. Mm-hmm. And again, yeah. no knock on her if this is her brand. But yeah. I, I think that there's not the X factor yet. And maybe she's still trying to figure stuff out, which is fine. Again, she's very young. She has time. Only 17. But needs needs some X factor in there. For sure. Like, she's definitely got the PCS side. Like, she, pun intended, she gives her all in the short program to The Giving by Michael W. Smith. She gives her. She does a lot of giving. She does a lot of giving. Um, But anyway, I love the dress for Moonlight Sonata, though. It was very, very pretty. It is very pretty. And I I do enjoy the giving dress as well. I think that the purple is very sudden at the bottom, though. It could use a little bit of an ombre. But again, Mm. that's just me being picky. Um, However, with a field this deep, I just don't think that she had much of a chance, kind of with all the falls and the mistakes and the free skate. She looked pretty defeated maybe halfway through. I felt really bad. But yeah, just not not her event. And I think that she could use a little bit of a refresh with the branding. I completely agree. Somebody who has her own branding company is Yokoi Yohana. Um, she skated last year to Tom and Jerry with like the full sound effects integrated in. So like she she knows how to... She's got her own brand. Um, but she decided that her branding company would deliver a Malaguena short program this season, oh. which I was disappointed by. Yeah. It, it's like with everyone picking Bolero for this season's free skate. I'm like... Literally everyone. I, I'm like... Picking Bolero. Girl, guys, you do realize there is a whole world of music out there. Like skates to... I thought Johanna was going to skate to the Lion King. No, that's Wakaba. Wakaba is the Lion King. Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. I was like, the Lion King is there somewhere. Wakaba, like, all power to you. Anyway, we'll talk about you when it's, you know, your Grand Prix. But, I mean, at least it was a very Malaguena dress. It was definitely a very Malaguena dress. Um, She did pop the Lutz, which is very unfortunate. Yes. Her flip was called on the quarter and she turned out of her triple toe. A lot of mistakes mm. in the short program. The warm-up wasn't great as well. The six-minute warm-up, she was alternating between popping and rotating her jumps. So I was hopeful that it wouldn't carry on to the program, but unfortunately it did. Yeah. In the free skate, though, last season she skated to Tom and Jerry, and this season it's a queen medley, but she opened up with fat-bottomed <laughs> girls. <laughs> what a song to open your free skate with, I will tell you. How do you go from Tom and Jerry to fat bottom girls? Easy. Is that like an improvement? I, I can't tell. I mean, it's lateral movement. It is incredibly lateral movement. Pointed. She starts off with fat bottom <laughs> girls, then goes to 
<laughs> I'm sorry. We will rock you. Then goes to We Are the Champions, which you know I approve of the medley. Um, for an Olympic season, you know what? Johanna's got it. But she also has this like it's not really mustard. It's also not really like perfectly yellow costume. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not exactly a fan, but you, you seem like you're having the time of your life. So I'll accept it. However, a fun program and she was great. I mean, there are a few landings were a, t- a bit tight and whippy today, um, but she's staying on her feet, stood on her feet, huge double axel to open, massive triple flip, and she holds onto the landing. I'm like, whoo, okay, we're going. She also managed to do like a triple sow, triple toe, double toe, like in the middle of her program. And I was like, wee, but I was so worried at the end of her program, it looked like she was crying. And I was like, oh no, why is she crying? Is she upset? Like, is this a happy cry? I think she was gassed. I think she was just really tired. Maybe the default was laughing. Like I completely get it, but I was like worried. I'm like, you didn't fall. Like, is this, but hopefully it was a happy cry. Um, cause she's still on her feet. Definitely different from the short program, which we're very happy about. Um, and thank you for skating to Fat Bottom Girls for your Olympic season. Tom and Jerry to Fat Bottom Girls. <laughs> no, still not sure how I feel about that. Anyways, uh, a great song choice, though, however, was our 10th place oh, finisher, Star from the U.S. She, yeah, she skated in her short program to her own cover of At Last by Etta James. You know what? That's her own branding. And it's completely fine with everybody. It's a good brand. It's a good brand. It's a very good one. I think she's the only person who were just like, okay, you can skate to your own vocals for a competitive program. Yeah, my last memory of an At Last program was Chris Kneerum, and we all know what happened with that. So I'm glad that now I have this memory Mm -hmm. of an At Last program. True. It was was great. Um, She... Did, she doesn't have the highest technical content, like base value of all the skaters here. Um, and then on her triple toe, triple toe, she did step out and have a rough landing, which was reflected in the GOE. Um, however, this uh, was a spot that went to star after Brady withdrew uh, due to reporting an injury. So I'm glad that she was able to be here, yes. even though she did not quite have the base value of other athletes here. Um, it was very, very nice to see this program. Definitely, if you were watching the Peacock live stream, you would have definitely heard like the how to keep your eyes on the prize. And there was this like this whole Star Andrews um, kind of commercial ad thing. And it it was playing like for 65% of the skaters right after they skated. And it's like huge over the arena. Anyway, um, big star promo, which she deserves. Um, She also had wonderful dresses. I really enjoyed both of them. But also, I enjoyed the free program because it was better than the short. Um, I think the back half of it, you know, she started to get tired, maybe, and a few mistakes started to um, eke in. But she was skating to Bigger, and I was here by Beyonce. And I was like, ooh, she knows how to pick music. Yeah, in the free skate, she hung onto the triple toe, triple toe better than she did in the short program. Good girl. I was like clutching at my pearls even though I don't wear pearls going like star please don't implode um but she did she did decent I mean we've seen her really really struggle with consistency and um especially within a program it seems to me that you know oftentimes when she makes one mistake many follow in the program she had quite a lot of um on the quarter calls in the free program but you know what? Experience is experience. Grand Prix event. So good on your star. Yeah, for sure. Um, I just really enjoyed seeing her, even though I'm not happy that Brady was injured. It was it was nice for her to be here. I really appreciate it. Um, let's move on to our ninth place finisher. Ekaterina Karakova from Poland. Such a big fan favorite. She came in 11th in the short program, but really had a killer free skate and finished um, ninth in the free skate, ninth overall. In her short program, she skated to Step by Renee Aubrey, had this like really rainbow, it's not really rainbow, but a very colorful costume that I can only really describe as like very dragonfly-ish. Um, but she she opened with a triple flip, triple toe. Flip was called on the quarter, toe was called under. Um, triple Lutz was all right. Double Axel was caught in the quarter, so she she got dinged a lot on the technical side. However, in the free skate, she was 
ecstatic with her performance and fair enough loving life loving life she was you know dancing it was really really cute um you know clean program i was like first i was like oh honey please get rid of the over the boot tights like it's completely over the heel as well which is like my least favorite type the costume was so much fun though i i accept the over the boot tight if the costume is going to be this brand of fun very very true um she opened with a triple lutz euler triple flip combo which is like i love that combo um did get called on the quarter for the lutz unfortunately but i mean that's a power combo seriously so good on her she was so happy, which made me happy. It really was kind of like a moment skate for her. So very, very pleased that she managed to have that moment in front of a crowd at um, at a Grand Prix. Yes, she was ecstatic again in the free skate. Her costume was amazing. Very happy. Uh, she does not have a solid and consistent triple-triple. Um, apart from that triple Lutz Euler triple flip, I think that does seem to be her combo, which is great. Um, again, it was called on the quarter, but she has that is her consistent combo. So, um, And again, the dress... So much fun. So much fun. Just like her and her personality. Yeah, she's just like a ray of sunshine, and I like that a lot. Um, Let's move to our eighth place finisher, Yelim Kim from Korea. She had an interesting competition, didn't she? She she came in sixth for the for the short program and eighth Which was great. Which was great. Um and eighth for the free for eighth overall. Her short program to Liebstrom. Uh, you know what? This piece of music, I, I'm glad that it's not like completely overused. It's like it's a frequent um, visitor to the skating world, but but not a permanent not one. a permanent one. And I think she does it very very well. Opens up with a beautiful triple lutz triple toe loop, and she does everything like fairly well. But like just sits in sixth. Judges don't seem to give her much goe. Yeah. Everything was positive goe but everything was between plus one and plus three she only got one plus four and i think the judges are being a little stingy on that yeah. GOE with her it's uh you know if she was at a different coach and a coaching team those would be higher <laughs> you know what that is not a lie it's not a there lie. are no lies detected um i mean this could also be called like fair scoring if the rest of the field was scored in the same way. You know what is fair scoring? Is it relative? Is it objective? Who is it knows? skewed? I will stop waxing philosophical. Yeah. <laughs> uh, in the free skate, uh, unfortunately, I just didn't find it very memorable, which is kind of unfortunate. She came in eighth in the free skate with a score of 128.78. Um, I think that really she was not performing outwards in the free skate. Her personality was not showing. Uh, her style was not showing. It's very beautiful, but I think it needs to be more memorable. I completely agree. The dress was beautiful, though. It was incredibly beautiful. Um, I, it was really a bummer because you can tell that she was barreling down the ice for the first triple lutz, triple toe planned combo. Oh, for sure. But unfortunately, she had a huge fall on it. And I could tell, like, she was immediately disappointed. And I was just like, I really hope that she can get it together mentally, chuck a triple toe on the end of another jump. Because, I mean, that opening triple lutz, triple toe, very Yuna Kim-esque. And it was her moneymaker. And I just saw her confidence, like, literally disappear, um, which was really disappointing. She did have a second triple lutz planned um, in the second half of her program, but she only tagged on a double toe. Um, she does need to improve work on improving her lutz edge, though. But... Yeah, like I said, you can tell when the confidence just completely left her and it carried out through the rest of the performance, really. Yeah, really sad because I really enjoy her. She, I, I think that she is kind of like a breath of fresh air. I do think that she needs a little bit maybe better packaging in mm -hmm. terms of finding her style, yeah. making things very memorable. But again, she's got time. She's great. I really like her a lot. Do you know who else I really like and like the rest of the world really likes? Is Satoko Miyahara. Oh Oh my gosh, she did so well here. I'm so happy. Bless her soul. Like, I'm just so happy she's still skating because... And she got a standing ovation. Well deserved. They oh yeah. Stand. I was like, yes, everyone stand the bleep all up. All you stand up. Every single person. Everything just made me emotional. <laughs> like every time she this skates, she makes me emotional. 
Oh my gosh, these are such good Olympic year programs for her. Like, if there's anyone with good packaging, it's Satoko. Oh, like, she always. does Song for the Little Sparrow for her short program, and then Tosca is returning for the free skate. She has not skated clean consistently in a while. Yes. And just to see her skate clean, although things were definitely called under, and she really needs to work on that. I really Her can. jumps do not get height. I mean, I don't, I don't care about that. She knows. I, I really don't. She knows. <laughs> it's fine. Like, she can literally, I she can stand in the middle of the ice and do choreo sequences and step sequences for the rest of her life. And I'll be like, I will pay you money. It was just so, so nice to see her happy. For a short program, she brought back an old short program of hers and she was just like, the short program that I had, you know, didn't really sit right. So I went back into my old archives and, you know, wanted to find a program that I really resonated with, the strongest for this year. And she chose this, which was a really great choice. I mean, like, I don't think any of her choices can be bad choices because she's had such great programs over the years. She's just so darling. Um, a lot of technical calls throughout, but I'm glad that everything like the step sequence all the spins plus three GOE minimum. However, in the short program, how she didn't get the highest PCS literally baffles me. You know, I mean, just <laughs> the choice. Like Sasha Trusova, she was the only lady who got thirty-five, cracked the thirty-five mark in the PCS for the short program. It just doesn't seem right, does it? Because it isn't right. It's not right. <laughs> like it's really not. you know. Speak to anybody. Sasha Trusova's strengths is not in the PCS. I think she would willingly admit that herself. I don't think she cares really too much about it relative to other elements of her skating, um, such as the jumps. But it was a bit ridiculous. Like she has improved anyway this i'll save this for like when we talk about sasha but anyway i just still find incredulous that satoko didn't even get she didn't even get in the nines no one else no one really did like some judge threw out a seven for skating skills like 7.5 like that's are you just joking? plain rude there are no man what were there. you smoking um anyway for for the free skate she did end up with a 68.91 for the pcs so i was just like okay thank you like getting into the top three for I think she was in the top three for PCS. Anyway, she was up there and I was like, thank you. Um, for that step sequence, like, judge two, you throw out a plus two. Like, I don't know what you were smoking oh either, gosh. but like, w what? Anyway. It's very upsetting. Yeah, I was just very much living for the choreo sequence, step sequence. I was on the verge of tears, really. <laughs> not lying there. She was so happy, you know, and it's very sad that she does not get the scores that she deserves because, you know, whatever. But she was, it was really, really nice to see her happy, finally. Like, 100%. she hasn't had great skates recently, again, hasn't skated clean consistently in a while. And it, I think maybe this could have brought back some confidence for her, which is so important and so nice. 100%. And I know, guys, that... You know, there's a performance execution component to the PCS and, like, the jumps and, you know, the calls she gets on it definitely affect that. But, like, who the hell gives Setoka Miyahara 7.5 for skating skills? Like, are you... Seriously? Anyway, let's move on to somebody who really went on an emotional roller coaster, who also did an incredible free program. And that's Amber Glenn, who ended up in sixth overall. Oh my gosh. Yeah, it, it was interesting because... Before Brady withdrew, you know, I feel like Amber maybe didn't have quite immense pressure on her to skate at like a, a an American Grand Prix event. But um, she was the competitor with maybe the highest base value coming in here of all the American ladies. So it I could tell that she was super nervous for the short program. Um, she did not attempt the triple axle, but she did do a double axle, which was huge. Um, I didn't think she was going to attempt the triple axle here because she did not attempt it in warmups on the day of. She did attempt it in practice the previous day and landed a beautiful triple axle, but she did not try one in warmups. So I didn't think that she was going to try one in the program. Um, she was tight on the rotation on the toe and stepped out of the loop. And at the end, she looked resolved she had an interesting look on her face I think she was a little disappointed but came back roaring in the free skate which was fantastic I 
am so glad that she kept this free skate. I think it works extremely well for her. Her and Misha Gay's collaboration um, is really strong. Uh, the dress is beautiful as well. The braid crown is like awesome. And you could tell the difference in her skating and her jumps between the short and the free skate. You know, the jumps were a lot more punchy and clean. That opening triple flip, triple toe was like chef's kiss. Great. Um, she fought for all of her landings. She was giving it for the choreo sequence. Um, the pride flags were out and about and she was like, it was making her smile and everything, which I was so happy about. And then she finally finally scored over 200 in terms of like total points um, at an international competition. I think this was the first time it happened. She scored 201.02 in total. So I'm incredibly happy for her. I don't like, I don't think she really cared whether she was on the podium or not. She cracked the 200 mark for the first time. And that is winning in her eyes and in my eyes. <laughs> oh my gosh. She was so excited. She also sent out a tweet that she wanted to meet all the folks with yes. rainbow flags in the lobby to take a photo with them. Oh, my little heart. It was, I'm very happy with her. I I ride the emotional roll, roller coaster with her. And I think that free program and Skate America in general is a great early birthday present because she turns 22 on 28th of October, which is very, oh my very gosh. close. That's just in a couple of days here. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Well, happy early birthday. I know. And then she can play 22 by Taylor yeah. Swift. Oh my which, gosh. Here we go. Here we go. It's, Love her it's, and 22. It's, mm, there we go. <laughs> All right, let's move on to our fifth place finisher, who I am obsessed with and I have been for a fair bit, and that is Ksenia Sinitsina. She's 17. For the past, like, one and a half seasons, she has been out due to injury, and so I am so glad she's back. And that short program, like, holy shit. <laughs> it was so nice. It's She skates to Tchaikovsky. Um, Lullaby by Tchaikovsky. The dress is like, it looks like Selkie. Like, it's yeah. so nice. It's, it's a little, divine. it's a lot. It's a lot of dress. Um, but I really enjoy it because I'm a big Selkie fan. <laughs> it's just so nice. It's beautifully packaged. Like, if we talk about packaging, like, I think that the short program for her is the perfect package. Like, she seems very comfortable with it. She looks beautiful. The choreography, the costume, everything just kind of goes together so well. 100%. I think it's the perfect amount of a lot of dress, if you know what I mean. It's it's divine. She has incredible poise, posture. She's very subtle, but effective with all of her expressions and movements. It's it's truly, it's truly divine. Um, she doesn't have the biggest jumps, and that's definitely reflected in the GOEs. But you know, they're very clean. Everything she does, she does very well. Um, she has edges. Like, the, the transitions in and out of her jumps are beautiful. But judges are dinging her hard on PCS. Like, real hard. Yeah, judges were really, really going for her. Which was very interesting because her fellow country woman <laughs> was not dinged hard whatsoever but no. um the free skate unfortunately did not go quite as well for her compared to other folks who the free skate went very well for yeah. however i do love the queen's gambit soundtrack yes. because it's not malaguena <laughs> <laughs> absolutely um i'm a big fan of her skating to the queen's gambit um not so much a fan of like the opening five seconds with the car crash noise like i get it no, I, mean, I watch Queen's that. Gambit, you know, I know it's a part of it, but like, it's just so jarring when like you're playing no. that across arena speakers. And I'm like, I, I don't think we need that, but thank you for the, the melodramatics. Thanks for letting us know. Thanks for informing us. It, it's very Russian. It's very, very Russian. Um, you know, she didn't have any major mistakes in the free skate. She got one uh, quarter call for the triple flip double toe um, towards the end of the program. But like I said, her, her jumps aren't massive and they don't lend themselves to getting huge GOEs. Um, the rest, like her, her other elements do. For example, the choreo sequence, which she got one like zero and one plus five. The rest were like plus twos and threes. And I was like, this... 
what? <laughs> like, there's a big difference between zero and plus five, if you guys didn't know. If, if you did not know. On a scale of minus five, five to plus five. Anyway, um, she came like eighth in terms of PCS for the free skate, which is mind-boggling just looking at the ranking of the pcs for the free skate is something else it's something else like part of it is yes i agree and the other part of it is like wait what just happened (laughs) it's very interesting i will admit that she her frame is very slight definitely compared to um previous seasons for example if you watch her at youth olympic games and you know some junior grand prix her she's like grown in just the legs and she's her her frame her frame is very slight and she doesn't have a lot of power in her skating. It's beautiful and delicate and lovely, but speed across the ice is something I I do think she can add. And I hate to even say it, but I think adding the speed would be such a big help in you know making the judges realize her strengths and giving her the PCS that she deserves. Yeah. I I do also think that she has some to grow because, like you said, the limbs are very long, but I don't think she is quite done growing yet. So it'll be very interesting to see how she adapts to the changes in her body, which, again, everyone goes through and it's totally natural and fine. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I I, I really enjoy her. Uh, Of the newer Russian women on the scene, not newer in general, but just newer to seniors, um, I do think that she is one of my favorites. Yeah, I I completely agree. Um, She has that kind of quality about her. She has her own X Factor brand, (laughs) is what I'll say. Um, She is a big breath of fresh air. I'm also disappointed she came in fifth overall, but she did get a small medal for the short program, which she came third in. Um, But let's move on to fourth place finisher. I really wish they had a pewter medalist stand here. Anyway, it is one of our favorites. Kauri Sakamoto. Oh my gosh. Okay. I will tell you that these programs are not my favorite for her. There was also some kerfuffle behind the scenes with Benoit, apparently. We I will not get into that. But um so in the short program, she skates to uh Hans Zimmer, Gladiator. Uh you could tell that the double flip. The minute that she took <sighs> off, that it was going to be a fight. But she managed to tack on the triple toe, which, good for you. Um, it is a very interesting costume. Uh, if you've not seen it yet, it's kind of a, it's sparkly. It's kind of like light blue with some cream and like dark purple. And a lot of wrapping around her limbs. It's like one of those TikToks that you see where the, the people buy the dresses and it just looks like <laughs> one long piece oh of fabric God. and you're like, They're like, I'm going to get this on my body somehow. Yeah, Um, and you can tie it like 17 different ways. What a bargain. You can tie it around the neck. You can do one (laughs) shoulder, two shoulders, halter. It it seems like one of those. Um, Yes. Or like a mummy, um, like some mummy wraps that are dyed in like really nice ombre. Yeah, exactly. Um, It is a very interesting costume. It's no, no roots, but we won't bet on how many times I'll say that this season. Um, It is a very solid program apart from the double flip, but you could really tell that she was kicking herself just because the field here is very deep and it was going to be a fight for those podium spots. But the minute that she took off, you could really tell on her face like, oh, shit, I need to tack on the triple toe here. Otherwise, I'm going to be in big trouble. But you know what? All props to her. She's one of those skaters that knows how to fight for you know her jumps the double flip she's just like in two seconds you know she's like mind switch triple toe here we go instead of other skaters who might just be like oh my god I popped the flip and now I'll tag on a single toe and you're just like you just left multitude of points on the table come on but she didn't she was just like bam here we go so very like big props to her for that um I do prefer this short program over last season's bar color jazz I know a lot of people like it, but it just... It was not my favorite, unfortunately. A big part of it also was that we were salty and missing um, that program, the (laughs) you-know-what program. But I think this was an improvement, in my personal opinion, on last season's. The Free Skate, unfortunately, it's, it's it's entitled... No fight left in me, which is a falsehood, a full on falsehood. Yes. And like, good job for like an Olympic season. Like, what are you skating to? No more flight left in me. No fight left in me. Oh, no, it's just not flight fight. 
<laughs> wow, that that's my trauma informed lens coming out. But um, apart from the very unfortunate titling to the song, I do love the costume. It's very very unique. Um, it's long sleeved. It's got it's like this royal blue slash purple color, and there is bronze metallic detailing, and it is very fine. I enjoy it a lot. It's unique for sure. I didn't know whether I was going to say like I liked it or not. But you know what? With the music and the costume, like they work together. Like I think by itself, I wouldn't love the costume. But when Kauri skates to it, I was like, you know what? I don't mind it. I I don't mind this costume. Yeah, it's pretty great. However, I I just think she should take the Matrix to the Olympics. I really do. Joss, I mean, I agree with you, but... (laughs) I mean, skating to it for three seasons in a row, I would probably put That's my a lot eyes of out. Ma- That's too much time in the Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> too much time. Too much time spent in the Matrix. Too much Liam Neeson. Yeah. Well, Wait, is that Liam Neeson? No, it's Keanu Reeves. <laughs> Where did Liam Neeson even come in? Like, she's not taken. <laughs> <Where did Liam Neeson? laughs> How did he enter? Liam Neeson has entered the chat. The only time Liam Neeson will enter the chat is to take Kauri to the Olympics. Like, oh, no. Bad. But man, was this a free program. It was such a good skate for a a huge triple foot, triple toe and clean in the second half. One of my favorite parts about a Kauri free skate is the second half where she like turns it all up and she like starts, you know, dropping bombs as in like bombs in a good way, right? She's like the triple flip, triple toe, the triple axle, triple toe, double toe. Like she's turning it up. Um, She was dropping levels in the spins though. I was like, come on. Please. Oh, I know. I was like, oh, geez. But then she was like, triple loop right on the music. And I was like, this is a moment. And then ends with the music going, I'm a woman. And I'm like, oh, let's go. And she was so happy. Like she was running off the ice to hug her coach. Um, oh, so I love happy. I, I love, I love happy, happy, happy. <laughs> <laughs> we oh. love happy Kari. Um, and then came a really weird moment where she was like, in the kiss and cry like bless her soul she's like oh my god can i be happy with like this free skate score like oh my god let's wait to see and then she was like oh no i'm second and she was like laughing it off and i feel like she was actually more disappointed than i I don't know i feel like the audience members were like really disappointed and oh that is true the audience was very displeased about that yeah that she was in second she she scored 144.77 in the free skate um 1.44.77. 1.44.77. That's like a nice number. Anyway, um, and 215.93 overall. But she did come first in PCS for the free skate. So, like, consolation prize? Oh, no. I mean, she, made, right. she also got, like, a small medal for the free skate because she came third. So, anyway, we, we'll bang on about PCS, like, when we when we get to the top. In about five minutes here. Yeah, in about five minutes. But let's move on to our third place finisher, and that is Young Yu. Oh my gosh, I was, okay. I She's not my favorite. I do find her a little frustrating to watch. I think that, again, her packaging needs a little bit of assistance. However, a happy Young Yu here. Yes. It's more than I could ask for. Mm-hmm. So the short program skating to Welling Winds from the Leftovers soundtrack. It was choreographed by Tom Dixon. Um, She did attempt a triple axel, but she fell on it. And all I can say was that her performances 100% get affected by how her jumps go. Yeah. That's all I'll say. Absolutely. But for that free skate, different story. To Les Miserables, choreographed by Shailen Bourne. um, And as soon as she came out on the ice, I was like, this is a version of an old Yuna dress. Like... But I'm fine with it. I'm completely fine with it. I think it was a Scheherazade dress. It's a great dress. No complaints. Yeah. But guess what? That triple axel, she landed it. The only triple axel of the competition, like, bang. And it set the tone in a big, big way. She was so, she was on fire after that. Yes, She's she like, was. I did it. And then the rest of it just kind of happened for her, which is fantastic. But you know what? She was performing. Yeah, this was maybe like she's smiling and perf- like actually yeah, performing? the most like outwardly happy and expressive that I've seen mm-hmm. her maybe like ever. Yeah, I was like, this is improvement. I'm like, oh my god, great. She does have gorgeous, gorgeous jumps though. They are really you know Kim esque. They are floaty, huge, um, great flow, very just very very quality. Um, and she got a standing O. What a skate. Deserved. 
this audience was just you could tell that they were just really stoked to be there they were like mm-hmm. international competition stand up for everyone that deserves it very generous I mean deservedly so but I'm glad that they were supportive yeah, and they were also supportive yeah. of like very supportive of, of skaters who didn't do well as well but big moment for for young and very very happy for her because that free skate was that was something it was a moment it was uh okay so let's move on to our silver medalist Daria Usachova from Russia uh, this is her first senior international and man I'm a fan of Daria I really am I think she is like a mesh of so many previous Tuparita girls in the best way possible um she's also a lovely personality only 15 still damn but short program she skated to never enough from the greatest showman they promote it as she skates to the greatest showman I'm like please no <laughs> I know I saw it I was like oh shit this is the only greatest showman I will tolerate though only because it's one piece of music there are no cuts yes and there is nothing worse than when the greatest showman programs have multiple cuts and then somewhere in the middle you hear this extended (laughs) silence and you just know that after it comes uh, and I'm like no I can't do it one more time if I have to hear that one more time I can't I can't do it I just I really can't there's, there's been so much Greatest Showman and like there are other soundtracks out I there. only have so much tolerance for that extended yeah. silence knowing what's to come. I know. It's like it's not that great of a soundtrack if you're going to play it like multiple times. Like just anyway. It was a lovely skate. I think that Shaw Program, it was a lovely color of dress. Um, I think she had great solid lofty jumps. They looked really confident. Um, I do love the her flow across the ice. Uh, just the package in term in general. I think it was great. I do think she should have been first after the fr- after the short program, though. I agree. I also, however, wouldn't have had her in second overall. But you know, it's not yeah. a knock on her. No, I just it do isn't. think that the judging was not consistent. And again, none of this is any athlete's fault. No, it isn't. I mean, a lot of the Russian athletes, because it's such a deep field, they know. Well, at least in in what they say to the media they're just like look I just go out there to skate what I you know just to skate my best and the rest of it's up to the judges which which is the truth (laughs) which it is and it's a good attitude to have especially when you know a lot of your um, teammates are your competitors as well but that free program to Ness on Dorma um not sure if I like the dress and look it wasn't her best performance by any means I think that you know, she made a mistake on the triple flip um, in the back half of the program. She flipped out of it, and that was supposed to be a triple flip, triple toe. Um, so she flew down the ice afterwards for another triple flip, triple toe attempt, but couldn't manage to tag on the triple toe because of the landing of the flip. Um, but you could tell the intent was there to go up for the triple toe. Like, she was punching it, but... Yeah, it just, she was really pissed at herself afterwards. Um, and I li- I literally texted you and I was just like, oh, she, you know, she did okay. You know, mistake at the back half of the program. I think she'll slide behind um, Young and Kauri. But she did not. <laughs> Lo and behold, she slid in front. And I don't think that that was a good decision by the judges. Uh, no. I mean, she did come fourth in the free skate. So technically she did slide behind Young and Kauri in the free skate. I mean, look, she did have a buffer in the short program and, you know, the difference between the second and third in terms of points overall um, was very minor. It was like, you know, 0.34. So, I mean, I agree with the tightness of like second to fourth, I think, but (laughs) the short program scoring was worse than the free program scoring. I I will say that. It was, and I think that is really kind of what screwed things up. Yeah, for sure. (laughs) Is that the short program was like, the difference was like so stark and apparent that the judging was off. (laughs) And that that's kind of what screwed things up, I think. Yeah, for for both Sasha Trusiver and Daria in the short program, um, I don't, I wouldn't have put their scores that high. I do agree that they should have been in first and second. um, But anyway... Um, free skate wasn't her best. She was pissed at it. Um, but I really enjoy her as a skater. Um, I'm glad that she came out and on her first Grand Prix skated, you know, quite decently and showed herself, um, very well. So 
she's a lovely skater. I think she has a lot of qualities that um, that hopefully will carry her through throughout puberty and through other seasons. But I think she's got like a mis a mishmash of like Aliona's jumps and like Anna Shabakova's like presentation and expression. Um, and I, f- I think it's a good mix. And she doesn't have really awful technique as well. So that's a big plus. <laughs> that's a big plus. That's always a big plus when you don't have awful technique. <laughs> But let's move on to our winner of the event, and that is, of course, Alexandra Trusova. You know, it was really interesting because coming into this event, she actually didn't attend any of the tra- practice sessions, and she confirmed um, on one TV that she has some sort of lower body injury, although it seems very mysterious, and, and I've checked multiple places, and no one really seems to know what it is, and she didn't specify it in the news. I think it's a foot injury. Okay. Yeah. Um. Well, maybe that is what it is, but I couldn't find any kind of consistent reporting on this, but she is injured in in some sense. Um, However, you would never be able to tell, although she was kind of performing more internally here. um, You could tell that she was really fighting, especially in the short program. But I will say that 35.48 PSCS is pretty ridiculous. It's not even, it's mid 35s, not even like 35.01. It's mid Okay, we can all agree that Frida and Cruella are the two best programs she has ever put out. I really like the programs. They are great vehicles for her. Um, the strongest programs she's had in her, you know, catalog and repertoire. But they're not, like, PCS isn't her strength. Like, it really isn't. She's definitely improved a lot in that, um, in that domain. But it's not, like, come on. You'd never be able to tell that PCS was not her strength from the scores. Absolutely. Um, we texted each other straight after when those um, when that short program score came out and we're like, that's bullshit. I'm, I'm sorry. Like, this isn't a knock on Sasha at all. I think she did very well in the, in the short program. Double axel, triple lutz, triple toe, triple flip. Very standard for her. Um, you know, there's a lot of red as well. But I was like, this isn't the right scoring. Like, it's just not right. Like, you would never be able to tell that that skate got that score you know like if you're looking at the two it just doesn't correlate and it's it gets even worse when you look at the rankings of where other folks fell in pcs it just doesn't make sense and like even for her i don't think this is the best that she could skate it even with the double axle i think there's a lot of room for improvement i think she knows that Uh, anyway yeah, it really bothers me. I, I do think that she should have been first, but not with that large of a margin. Um, oh, you mean in terms of like overall or in the short program? Uh, no, not in the short. I, do, I don't think she should have been first in the short program. I'm just saying overall, just considering her performance in the free skate was, again, the PCS is extremely questionable, but just comparing her performance in the free skate, I do think that she did deserve first. Um, however, in the short program, I would have had Daria first. Yeah, completely agree. Um, free skate, Cruella, um, love this program for her. Um, she did have a new costume that was very polarizing and I think it also delivered some polarizing, um, thoughts in me as well. Cause I was like, oh, I kind of like really vibe with the full, full black attire that she had for, you know, test skates. And I think it was also in US international. I was like, I vibe with this and with the red hairs, like great contrast. Um, now she has this newspaper inspired thing. It's a little Hobby Lobby. Yeah, it's a little Hobby Lobby. I don't mind the concept of it. Oh no, the concept is so great. I really I enjoy a lot about this. The newspaper theme fits very well with the Cruella theme. I like the black, red, and white. Yep. It is, again, very on theme with the movie. Just the execution leaves a lot to be desired. I completely agree. I think if she can, like, if there are iterations of the dress, I'd really appreciate that. Um, I think people did notice, however, on the in her newspaper sash, <laughs> newspaper sash, um, she did have the names of her all of her dogs on there, which I thought was a really cute touch. I think that's a that's really fun. However, also questionable considering Why? what Cruella does yeah, with okay. dogs. But in the Cruella movie, they did debunk a lot of that. However, if you did not know Cruella lore, you would also be questioning this. True, but then you could also say it's really questionable for Sasha to be skating to Cruella in general, given that she has like 10 million dogs and wants to open a dog shelter. It's, it's also true. A lot of a lot of uh, philosophical waxing that we could do here regarding the 
the the concept behind the dog program. But it requires her to act, right? Which is like, it requires her to improve on PCS. And I think that <laughs> what Terry has done incredibly well with Sasha is that she knows how to pick, or not just with Sasha, but she knows how to pick out programs and pieces of music that play to the strengths of the skater and also can mask their weaknesses, which that is one of her strengths. I, you know, you can have your opinions about, um, you know, her methods and everything else, but you can't deny that she is very strong in that, um, in that aspect. And, you know, for Sasha to be skating to rock music for the free program where, you know, she doesn't pay too much attention to her PCS because she's got like 10 bazillion quads to focus on. It's, it's a good vehicle for her to, you know, you don't expect a lot of lyrical and, you know, lovely PCS in a rock program. Like, he, it's like Jimmy's, Jimmy Miles turned down for what? Like, you can get away with a lot of things. Um, but she definitely had watered down content due to her injury, which I kind of was glad about because it's nice to see Sasha skate clean. It's a bit hard when she's got like five quads in her program and um, she's struggling to, to land all of them. She did open with a quad Lutz. It was pitched forward, but she landed it. Um, yeah, I don't know about you. Do you feel the same way? She needs to play the long game. And I, she, Sasha Trusova is not very good at playing the long game. She likes to just go, go, go. However, She's I'm stopping in that regard. I'm glad that whoever's decision it was to play the long game here and to kind of dial it back a little bit was the correct decision because. You know, it was a Terry's. <laughs> With the no comment with, with the injury, whatever it may be, the mysterious injury, I'm just glad that she dialed it back because she has a tendency to not dial it back. But I'm glad that that someone, maybe herself, has advised her otherwise. I think that in an interview I read, she was just like, so the morning of the competition, my foot felt like all right or like my injury felt all right. So we decided to compete and not pull out. Um, and then in the free skate, she was like, so Terry was asking me to dial back the content, but like, I didn't want to. And I was like, classic. She's like, that girl is <laughs> stubborn and everyone knows it. I think her coaches have talked about how she's just very, very Tara lipinski s in terms of like, go, 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 go. I don't want to like sacrifice anything. And so when she was like, oh no, I don't want to dial back my program content. I was like, oh dear God. <laughs> like, this is how you do not go to the Olympics because you were too injured to go. Um, but then maybe like after the short program and how she pulled up afterwards, I feel like a Terry was like, come on, Sasha, like you can do one quad. And Sasha was like, fine, <laughs> fine. <laughs> but, uh, I'm glad that she didn't. Um, I feel like when she was going into that triple loop, I was worried she was going for a quad loop though. And I was like, oh God, girl. no, not a quad loop. <laughs> I was like, girl, please, please don't. But you know, I, I always love kind of how her PCS rankings change between the short program and the free program because I mean there's also a difference in how she skates them but, you know in the short program you can tell she pays attention to it more so than the free program because free program is just go 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 um but then the PCS just drops well and you're just like is. well thank you because <laughs> like <laughs> it it's fair in terms of that I'm like relative to other skaters like it's still very high but between the programs you're just like yeah this is understandable <laughs> All right, that wraps up both pairs and ladies. We're, we're calling them women now. The ISU has changed it to we are. women. So, you know, the ISU is doing always stuff. on the front <laughs> foot of everything, right? At the, at the front of social justice and change. <laughs> oh, ISU. Anyways, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, today, we will actually not be doing a kiss and cry just because we just want to get our shit together for these episodes, yes. but it will be returning with some book recommendations for our next event, which is whew, coming up next week. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Better get our books in order. Um, thank you so much for joining us. So I am Joss, and you can come and chat with us at Let's Get Down Pod. That's L-U-T-Z, Get Down Pod, on Twitter and Instagram. And if you want to work with us, you can shoot us an email at letsgetdownpod at gmail.com. I'm Claudia, and if you like this podcast and also want to book a paper mache class with Sasha Trusova, then please leave us a review and give us some five-star love, because we would really appreciate it. Thanks, y'all, for listening. Talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.